getting warm um, as, as we get into the next couple of days. For today, it is going to be dropping temperatures with the front. It could be some issues with rain creating some travel delays. This is your forecast here today. Chicago, not worried about too much coming in. It's actually the wind. Kelly talked about that south wind, and that first could create some issues at the airport. We watch for today, winds gusting easily 20 to 25 miles per hour. So as the wind changes direction, too, that can affect air travel. Just the changing of direction of the wind means that they're going to have to change around the configuration of how they're landing and taking off flights at airports. So Chicago, be ready for that today. There could be some delays. Um, that south wind to start today will be a crosswind for us right here across most of the interstates. And for um, in Chicago, I-90 West, the Kennedy Expressway, will be one of the busiest, most congested routes here through the city. And this evening is the worst travel day, according to AAA, between about 4 and 6 o'clock. So be ready for that today. All right, Kelly, how are things looking? In I know, look, I'm just being picky. It'd be great if you like 50, you know, and just a light jacket. But anyway, travel-wise, it looks pretty good, too. Today, we do have a front approaching. So the winds out ahead of that front could create some travel delays. We'll keep an eye on that. Here is the upper-level disturbance that we're watching coming out of uh, the Great Lakes. So there's that. But there's also, at the same time, a surface low that's coming in off the East Coast. That brings moisture up, especially southern New England gets that when it comes to the rain. So we'll watch that by tomorrow in terms of creating some issues for travelers. For today, it's going to be a mainly dry day. Here comes that system by overnight tonight and then tomorrow early. There will be some snow on the back edge, so we'll keep an eye on I-80 and I-90, western New York, western Pennsylvania. Rain comes up to New York. We get it from the coastal system first, then comes the front sweeping in uh, right through the morning. You know, I think, you know, for folks who are traveling in, in and out of the northeast, the afternoon really does look much, much better. So that's the great news. Early in the day, the weather's going to be a little dicey, but after that, it improves and everyone gets to clear out by the evening. Kelly, what's new this morning? It's like it's average because it's, it's been average. warm. Well, relative to the yeah. West, it's going to be cooler, but That's true. it's really not bad. No, so we've got the numbers for you. 93 in L.A. This will set records. 84 in San Diego. This is hot. This is hot in the summertime. This is especially hot when it comes to November and Thanksgiving. So here's your forecast tomorrow. The potential records. Northwest will see it, despite the fact that we're going to be covered in clouds and rain. It's still going to reach record high temperatures, going to 60 in Portland. Breaks the old record of 59, which was set decades ago. So breaking some old records up here. Rain is in the forecast and flood watches are up actually starting today and going all the way through Thursday in places like Seattle. So concerned about that rain, but elsewhere it's just warm. I mean, temperatures are going to be in the 90s for a couple of days in Southern California. Record highs again on Thanksgiving Day. And then we see it expand into Montana, into Wyoming, where we've been talking so much about the snow and the cold that you guys have been having. That's going away and we replace it by temperatures in the 60s. So here we go with the forecast on Friday, keeping not just the heat, but the record breaking temperatures. Even in Colorado, as you start to put on the skis and head down the slopes for the first tracks of the season. You're not going to need a big, thick jacket, that's for sure. Temperatures are warm, and then we go out to the plains where we hit the 70s and hitting records in places like Wichita, Kansas. All right, so Thanksgiving isn't the only thing people are looking forward to this week. There's also Black Friday shopping. He became a her, uh, hero yet again during Hurricane Harvey. This guy seems to be a hero time yes. and time again. Open Massive Thanksgiving feast at Gallery Furniture, and he joins us now from Houston to tell us about it. Jim, welcome. We're so glad to talk to you and have you on the show. Tell us about this Thanksgiving dinner. What's it all about? And hey, can we? What an amazing thing you're doing there, and really amazing started back too with Hurricane Harvey. How long after Harvey uh, did you have people taking shelter at your stores? How long did they? Back in, you know, after Hurricane Katrina, you had Louisiana residents come in. Was this something that was taught to you as a kid to be philanthropic like this, or you just feel it in your heart? Place to be. Um, let's talk about Houston though for a second. Do you see the city returning to normalcy? How long do you think it's going to take? Is there still a lot of work to be done there? In 30 seconds, you brought. Um, um, some 60 some odd people to the Astros game and L well Jim McInville we're grateful to have you walking on this earth the same time yes, we are yes. you are a hero we all need to be more like Jim we can learn in a lot this from world him. I love yeah, his, his life motto uh, grateful for everything entitled to nothing yeah, yeah that's, if we all live like that life would be a lot better wouldn't yes. it all right, a good way to kick off this Thanksgiving. We'll have more with your Thanksgiving forecast. Next. And you're not expecting it, and then all of a sudden you're driving and you hit snow. So let's show you where exactly that was going to happen. Today and into tomorrow, we've got a front that's crossing in through the Midwest, and then we also have a coastal system coming up that's going to bring rain to the Northeast. So don't worry about this coastal low. Look, by the time it gets up here into Wednesday, it is so far offshore, it is just going to be just helping to bring the moisture up, really. And then the front itself, as it comes through, a little bit of snow on the back edge of it, a little help from the lakes. 
but not a ton actually. So we'll see. You know, one to three inch kind of snow. The roads to watch. I-90, I-80. I think there could be the chance for some snow there and possibly I-81. You could run into a little bit of snow just south of Watertown if you're traveling there. Um, looking across the nation right now, where do we have snow cover? We have 13.7%, but it's extreme northern Minnesota, Wisconsin. It's the mountains in the west, and it's really much um, an elevation type event for you for the most part in the west. When we look at the odds of having a white Thanksgiving, it's about a 60 to 80% chance up here in the upper Midwest and actually 40 to 60% not too far away from that. However, with the warmth that we're going to have this Thanksgiving day, that's not going to be the case. When we look at the next seven days snowfall, the main snow is going to be very far north into Canada at high elevations, in fact, above, you know, 8,000 feet in most places. And after Thanksgiving, when we get a cold shot, there could be the chance of getting some snow down into the Appalachians here across parts of the north and east. So really, Steph, we got some snow, but many more that'll be sizzling for Thanksgiving.